Welcome, everybody. One Degree of Scandalous, Kato Kalen and Tom Zenner. We're going to be talking about I like Jared. Kato. I like Kato. Subway Jared and the insane oh. scandal behind him and the new docuseries that is out. We've got a person that was right in the middle of it. This is going to be a one hell of a fun show. This is So a- I'm bracing. Don't bring her in yet. You're talking about Jared Fogel, right? Yeah, but you know yeah. what? That guy is. I had no idea. And we're going to talk about this. Okay. What a freaking creep he was. But we're going to learn some details. And if you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you're going to want to watch it, right. especially when you see our guest and how amazing she is. And you're going to want to watch her in it. By the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, thanks. I wear, I agree. And I'm I agree. only saying that because it's St. Patrick's Day today. And, you know, we have. I don't do this on purpose. I don't give a crap. I mean, I love Connolly, but I don't really celebrate. It's, it's so weird because you wore your St. Patrick's outfit last week, too. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, it's a friend. that's me. Hey, by the way. You know, and I, you complain about the traffic. You yeah, complain yeah, about I, the traffic. I just deal with it. I don't, you know, it is what, it, but today, Cato, what the hell is going on in the streets today? I don't know. I, it's Sunset Boulevard. They do construction. So oh. I, I avoided it and it took me uh, 43 minutes today. Okay. That's not bad. That, well, it's five miles. Okay. But that's still- I was on Fairfax and I have never seen this before. Yeah. There was a dude at the stoplight, you know, instead of just walking by and begging for change or begging for money, he was juggling lemons. He was juggling lemons and he dropped one. So I don't know if he turns it into a lemonade stand after a car drives over it or something, but he had extra lemons in his pocket and he was juggling lemons. I I mean, I felt that was a vaudeville act at a stoplight. I've seen some great people that will have certain ways to get money. I saw one will work for Bitcoin. I like that one. And I also also saw another one said, uh, I need a gift for Ben and JLo for the wedding. Please give money. Every as people on the side of the street are, you know, in LA, we have every side, every time you get off an exit at any freeway, you've got three or four people yeah. asking for money. And they could put some of that energy into getting a real job. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. As a comedy writer or something. But, um, maybe in the coming weeks, we've had a good week. We've had some fun things happen that hopefully yeah. we could talk about here in the very near future. But congrats on everything that's going on in your life. Everything else it's, cool? Everything's going great. Let's see. It's kids. Everything's upward. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. All right. We just need the rain to stop here. In L.A., it's been crazy how much rain it is. I I saw this baseball field that my son usually plays at. The thing was like four feet underwater. I could not believe it. You know, you you just don't really really doesn't hit home or perspective until you see that. Right. And you need a a snorkel. You you know, get the baseball bat and a snorkel. All right. Let's do it. We ready? (laughs) I've been ready since. But yes, since 2000. What year is it? You know what? Here's the cool thing about our guest. And let me bring her in right now. It's Serena Fazan. What a beautiful. Whoa. I've known (laughs) Serena for many, many years. It's it's great to have her news anchor for many, many years. For 23 years, she's been in Tampa. She was just a very, very popular newscaster at the ABC station there. Before that, she was in New Orleans. Before that, she got her first job in the Quad City. She's just a, a, a straight, wonderful news person and journalist to the core, amazing personality. And now we just discovered, Kato, that she can marry people. Oh, my <laughs> She's an ordained minister, too. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Serena. This we is- have so much to talk about with you. Thank gosh. Guys, thank you. Thank you so much. And wow, what compliments. Thank you. Seriously, I'm blessing. I'm you almost know, like Serena's one of those those people. And if you Google her, you'll 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 see her background. And what she, woman doesn't love to be oh, go, okay, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Serena, I told you, I, brace I, yourself for this. I'm okay? going from the the when we were in the green room earlier talking, we did a whole thing about but anyways, <laughs> it doesn't need to be explained. But she's cool, she'll be able to take any of this. Um, <laughs> she knew you were you knew you're gonna be a newscaster <laughs> for years, right? The, uh, you always knew you oh were gonna be an anchor. So you 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 Follow you love pop culture, you love the news, everything about it. What do you think of meeting Kato Kalen for the first time now? My gosh, OMG. Of course, I mean, I feel I feel like I know you. Oh, that's... I feel like I know you. Well, pop remember, culture. and people said that they could see you even more than Al Gore. Oh, yeah, yes, of <laughs> course. Yes, he's the inconvenient truth. I am the convenient truth. That's what I can tell you. They you know more people thought they recognized me more than Al Gore, 78 percent of the country, which uh I don't, I've never, would it's true. Al Gore. Serena, I mean, he's everywhere we go, but Cato brings yeah. such positive energy everywhere. And, and the funniest thing is when people think that they know him or they have a preconceived notion about him. And then he just, boom, shatters all of it because hear, you can't help but love him. I hear it all the time. Heard it today. And I said, come on, mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, you know me. You're my mom. <laughs> no, but I, it's, uh, it, and you know, I won't get into the whole thing of politics, but I, uh, obviously I Googled you. I wanted to research uh, everything about Serena. And I, I said to myself, uh, my God, you have done a lot 
I mean, not besides marrying people, I mean, from working and in, in, <laughs> in an interview, you did this interview with, um, we'll talk about everything Jared and all that later, but you did an interview with Hillary Clinton. And I think you, oh. you confronted her, if I'm not mistaken. You said, does she have a neurological yeah. problem? Which if you're talking to someone, it takes a lot of balls to ask someone that question. And, and you know, you're not obsequious to her. You just went right forward. What's the reaction and what happened? And did you get in trouble? Well, okay, so I have to tell you, so typically, you know, in interviews like that, they will give, I was the only anchor in the state at that time being able to do a one-on-one -on -one with her because it was such a close election. And uh, so I was very flattered and humbled and honored by that. And so typically they only give you two minutes. Well, they gave me six. Mm -hmm. And it, when you saw that, interview, she started to laugh at first, but then I pressed her on it. And the day before, or just recently, she was on the Today Show, and no offense to Matt Lauer, but Matt, she eviscerated Matt Lauer. And I'm like, what? why are national news correspondents, honestly, not ans asking that question? And I also asked about her opponent, of course, Donald Trump at the time. I And people were asking, are they too old? Or, you know, should they have neurological tests? And so I just did it. But oh, yeah, I mean, it made the hill. It made all these, you wow. know, everybody picked it up. But I did get in trouble from, from the campaign. They were they were upset. And I've it's never said little... that publicly. So your guys this is the first show that I've actually said, yes, they were upset. And you but I, you know, yeah. No, because that's, a, that's that? the job of a journalist. You know, you know what? That's, that is the job of a journalist. One hundred percent right. You know what? I notice in all reporters, especially in the the mainstream media, they never do a follow up question. You ne the, you did. They don't do the follow up tough questions ever. And I I hate the softball. You got to go. I mean, if someone's going to vote for someone, you want to find out everything about this if you're going to give your vote to this person. If she's a neurological problem, I remember that those tapes running where she seemed insane. So many things are going on. So I think you know. Who knows? She didn't win. Well, I would have asked. I didn't mean to interrupt, um, Cato. I'm sorry, but I would have asked Donald Trump. You know, the same, yeah. same, same type of questions. And I feel like the days of that's what journalism is about. You know, you need to, you need to ask those questions. 100 percent. And and by the way, I I think personally, Trump would would love to have those kind of questions. I think he loves to answer and be truthful to things. But that that was just a great thing I read about you. That's great. Did she give you a glare, or could you feel the intensity from her? Hey, you you went somewhere you weren't supposed to go. No, do you guys want to hear? All? No, for, not at all. In for fact, people. In fact, she was pretty warm. And my brother, my brother is a neurosurgeon. And my brother actually operated on Bill and Hillary Clinton's aid. Like I, you know, HIPAA laws and everything. I probably shouldn't say anything. And I'm not revealing names or anything. But I even talked about my brother. So she knew my brother. And I think I have to say, I really, I really researched a lot. That was probably one of the interviews I researched the most in, in, in my career. And I, I, I feel like even though that was a, tw a, a question that she was uncomfortable with, I really do feel she respected me. And she, she felt that I knew about her, you know, cause we talked for a long time afterwards. Wow. And when I say a long time, you know, for those interviews, you guys have, Tom, you've done those type of interviews before they whisk you in and out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but she stayed. No, that that's great. It took some guts to do that. What, I bet your station was proud of you, though, right? Did, did I, I would hope so. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, good. Can we get your brother on you our know, show? I, Can we get your brother on our show? I'm sorry. Tom, I'm oh, gonna, my gosh. I'm going to do a medical show, too. <laughs> Let me ask him. You, your brother's a neurosurgeon. What? You've got great genes in your family. Yeah. Newscaster, neurosurgeon. <laughs> goodness <laughs> yep some very very smart accomplished people all right so serena i saw you on the show i knew you were going to be on it right i think i had seen online that you were going to be in it and you do a great job kato she was in the the other documentary with the tiger king joe exotic uh, right maybe joe we'll exotic. start with that you know, i don't know what it is serena about florida <laughs> you know, about these weirdos down there but what yeah. about joe because i mean tiger king that and the last dance kind of saved everybody during COVID, right? Yeah. We had that to watch right away. But man, you know, when I saw him standing on the pickup truck doing the homemade music videos where he wasn't even singing and you find out it wasn't his voice, the guy's a trip. But man, his fame ultimately just did him in, don't you think? I mean, if he, if no, if with no national publicity, he'd still be doing his weird stuff, not in jail. Absolutely, 100%. So Joe Exotic, Tiger's Lies and Cover Up was my first um national producer credit. And it was during the time of, you know, COVID, you can get 
producers to LA. I worked with an amazing investigator um, named Jim Rathman, who was really the lead, you know, um, on, on that series. But that story is crazy. And people in Florida here are, many people are convinced that Carol Baskin did, did, um, you, you know, Carol Baskin, of course, right? <laughs> did feed her, feed her uh, ex-husband the tigers to the tigers that's it so the show the show took on that whole angle like when right it really wasn't supposed to go there but it was that one interview with the family and it became such a, right. a, an integral part of the show Here, here's why you're so good serena because when you started talking about that i thought you were going to say well and carol baskin who's husband died tragically and you go <laughs> who she fed to Dude. the lions well, I, 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 didn't not say that she, I did not say that she oh, fed them to the tigers and kata you should know about libel oh, yeah. <laughs> especially so i did not say that i said that is what that is what many people no, allege and believe and as a, a, well, what's, the, what's the have you done follow-ups with these people ever have you done any kind of follow-up on uh the, their lives or jim rothman you mentioned yes, I Yes, you know, in fact, I, I just saw Jim um, the like a couple of weeks ago. He would be fantastic, fantastic on your show because he's doing a lot of investigations now. And that show really, he solved here, he solved the biggest, one of the biggest cold cases on his show a long time ago on a podcast. But he's really incredible. But I do try to do follow ups all the time. Um, I mean, you meet all of these people and they can pour out their hearts and souls to you. Mm -hmm. And I try to as much as I can, for sure. And Cato, she's just good, right? Yeah. I mean, people feel they feel comfortable around her. Plus, she's got, you know, a little magic, you know, magic, magic potion too. people want to talk to her and reveal stuff. And because you've got such a great personality, you're so engaging and you do make people feel so comfortable. And that's why she's been on all these shows. Yeah. Right. Well, you, you mentioned something and I, I want to hear the follow up. If you could mention you said that uh, uh, Jim Rothman, correct, is his name? You said yeah, he, he, he solved one of the biggest cold cases ever. Which cold case is that? Is so that you I, so this is something that, because there's, mm, <laughs> I might not be able to say it on the record. He, I, I, you need to talk to him about it, but it is really, really interesting. And it's, I, I will say, um, yeah, you'll have to talk to him about it. How's oh, that for a tease? Okay, no, we'll so, call him. okay so, but it is a, a case that is solved and it is public record. Yes, yes, yes. It is public record. Um, um, yes, it is public record. And I know I, I do not mean to sound so vague about it, but he can explain. He can explain. He can explain why. Yeah, but he's but incredible. I mean, yeah, because scandal and true crime is like the, that's not only just the biggest TV shows on ID Network and Oxygen. But the podcast world now is just becoming the mm -hmm. true crime is just becoming the biggest seller in the world. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants it. That's why our show has just gone straight up to the sky. Well, I mean, Cato, you were involved in the biggest scandal in history, right? Wouldn't you say we're definitely one of the biggest, the biggest. Are, you talking about my, are you talking about my parking tickets? <laughs> yes, of course I am. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, no, it is. And it's uh, the 30 year anniversary is coming up. And uh, every time I tell Tom this all the time, anytime there's a trial that goes on, Anything from Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, to the uh, upcoming Alec Baldwin, everybody will call and I, I say, what's your opinion on that? And I just try to stay away from it. But this, the calls still come in and I always get asked to do, give my opinion, regardless of what it is. So, yeah. He's the go-to guy. You ever yeah. But honestly, right, Tom, did you ever imagine that? I mean, your life changed in an instant. Yeah. Like that it became a household name. So well, not just Not just now. When you go back and listen to some of our podcasts and you hear some of the un unbelievable stories, here's one of my favorite ones is, and you're going to love this as somebody that really follows news and Cato, yeah. this, this, and Cato will fill in the blanks, but let me just say it. So the, the night, June 12th, you know, 1994, Cato was on the phone with, with a friend, a girl, yeah. and they were just talking, Hey, you want to get together? You want to come over here? I want to get something to eat. You come over here. I'll go over there. And they're talking. And then, um, Cato goes, was there an earthquake? And she goes, no, I didn't do nothing. And he goes, are you sure? The wall, the, the picture on my wall just shook. It just moved. No, I didn't feel anything up here. Okay, whatever. You want to take it from there? Oh, yeah. So basically when the, at 5 a.m., one of the, the detectives came to my door, 
I just, you know, I didn't know they're detectives, but I opened my door and said, hi, and they came in and then they identified who they were. And I said, they said, what'd you wear yesterday? All the stuff and they're checking my shoes and I have no idea what's going on. I thought there was a plane crash with OJ. Anyways, I said, I don't know if this means anything, but my picture moved behind my wall and there's no, no window. Wow. And so that's where they found the bloody glove. So they and went so outside. That, that was OJ going over the wall and he dropped the bloody glove. That's what Cato heard. When the picture moved, isn't that insane? And then That's Furman the walks back there and finds it. Yeah, because it was Furman was talking to him. That was a theory that they had, and then we mm -hmm. had Tom Langham. But anyway, that was, yeah, many many things. And not only that, meeting people throughout my life with when you're famous, everybody kind of wants to meet. And so one of the people that wanted to meet me in the worst way, and I, I'm not gonna say I became friends with, but I hung out with him quite a few times at record producing. Uh, was Phil Spector. So I'm like everything, everything. All these weird people are coming my life, and they're and they, unfortunately they kill people <laughs> it's awful yeah. it's awful yeah it is gosh, i mean oh my gosh it's even hard to imagine it i think the two of you need to be on my show on the record because now you know i have i've gone beyond um traditional television and now i have my own shows under uh red house streaming the serena fazan network i can't believe court heitman the ceo launched my network right but will you guys come on my show can we say that on the record that you guys would yeah. come on my show yeah. right? on the record to. on the record on the record. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would love to. And congratulations. Great job. She's an entrepreneur too. So oh, smart. Tell. Serena and I were both smart. We got out of local news, right? Weren't you just <laughs> done with it after a while? I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. Good Lord, let me go. Well, local news isn't what it used to be, right? It's not what we signed up for. It's not. I hate saying oh. that. I hate saying that, but it's true. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, anchors aren't supposed to have opinions. Yeah. Well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> It's tough because yourself, you can't, you can't express your own opinion. You have to, but when you do go on Twitter, you got to go, these are my opinions, not my network's opinion. And it's like, I can't, I just be me. Yeah. You know, it's, that's what it got me difficult. in trouble. Serena, I didn't tell you this. This is how I left local news. I had like two years left on my contract and I was doing everything I could. I was doing a radio show. I was hosting the political roundtable show. I was volunteering. To, <laughs> if someone was sick in the morning, I would host the morning show. I, I just wanted to do it all. Right. And then I'll never forget my news director. He comes up to me. He goes, you just got to call. You don't own your brand. We own your brand. And I'm going. Dude, wow. relax, you know, yeah. so then I called my friend who was the attorney general or the former attorney general and a great lawyer. And he got me out of my contract with two years left. Wow. So that's I said that was a long time ago. But that, you and, know, it, it and did change. When we, what city? Phoenix in Phoenix. Yeah. But it wow. did. I mean, local news was different, you know, back mm -hmm. in the day, the 90s. It was just. Yeah. Like, but everybody was time. watching it at the night in the yes. 90s. Everybody was watching yes, it. But it's, right. the phone came out. It's like it's very difficult because I used to watch the local news. I haven't watched in years because everything's on my phone i get everything every update and it's like how do they exist and how much money like they said a guy at nbc seven million the same as paul moyer mm -hmm. i can't imagine anybody now getting a huge contract on local news i don't if you know they LA, don't know they've caught them big time gotta be mm -hmm. and if they right. would let people be more opinionated they'd get better ratings but it's so homogenized now and it's so yeah. safe and you know they all have an agenda anyway so no, but it's but it but it is so true. Like well, you would have to wait and watch the story, like at six p.m. or five p.m. or whatever. But now, right? And no one, it's all on here, and no one knows who the local news anchors are. I mean, I'm very humbled by this, but I get um, news directors in this market have said have said that I get recognized more than a lot of their new new anchors because <laughs> I've been here for so long, and it was during that time where you had to watch. Yeah, you I know? understand. So you're even more recognizable than El Gore. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> full circle. <laughs> I had to get back at you. Um, so you're you're involved in. Uh, if I could bring something. Yeah, yeah. Let's I, I wanna, get to it. I, I want to. You're involved. Someone named Jared Vogel. Jared Vogel. I actually met because I was invited to events, and I met him at the Indy 500. He's from Indy, and he's from Indiana, mm -hmm. and he's at this event, and he had crowds of people coming around. But when I read the story, and I saw the uh, the show uh, to catch catching a monster. I was thinking this guy had an ATM basically to kids with his uh, he had a, a, a charity. Yeah. For children. It was like an ATM. He could just order and he had this private life. Well, you want to talk about it? Oh, my gosh, guys. OK, so I have to say you guys know that, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur now, but I was in I've been in local news for years and years and I've covered everything. Mm -hmm. Those audio tapes that I listened to, the ones that he, you know, they shared snippets of it on the show with Rochelle Herman, yeah. the woman in Sarasota. Right. Those were the most sickening tapes 
I have ever listened to in my career. And I have listened to a lot of things and I've seen a lot of things. They haunted me and they could only use, you know, certain things. I had to listen to hours and hours of it because I also helped produce it. So it was, oh, you disgusting. And the thing about him is that he was trusted by everybody. Yep. And <laughs> he prayed on that. Yes. Trusted, by, trusted by, so by kids and their parents, which yeah. is probably either, when your parents yeah. trust you with their kids, that's that's like the ultimate bond of trust. And he knew that. And he seemed like such a nerd. And I had the exact same reaction that you did, Serena, but I didn't have to listen to hours of it. So the show is called Jared from Subway Catching a Monster Discovery Plus. Serena's all over this thing as an expert on it. And she's a producer for it as well. Um, and you were great, you know, just breaking it down. And we'll get to some of your funnier lines later. But here was my impression of Jared, you know, a dope, weird, just kind of a goof, right? Made, made, made millions off the fact that he lost this weight. Now, I don't, even, I don't even believe he lost the weight from eating Subway. I don't think you can eat that many carbs and lose weight unless he was having lettuce or and no bread or something. But now I think he's a total fraud. So when he went down, his house was raided about seven years ago, yeah. right? That's when it all happened. And when this happened, I thought, ooh, man, that's weird. And I was thinking maybe some photos or this or that. But like you alluded to, the detail of this sick pervert and what got him off and what he was looking for. He was a predator, a sick monster. They, and, and his chairman of his philanthropic group was almost as bad, if not worse. Right. So oh my God. I think he's worse. I, I'm like, I mean, evil, evil of having cameras in his own stepdaughters house. with the stepdaughters, yeah. whether he had friends over and shower. Yeah. I, I, what honestly, her mom? yeah, no kidding. Was like, well, she was involved. And the word that got this whole thing going, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Serena, is bestiality. That's what yeah. got the feds going because, I mean, I hate to say it, yeah, but that's I, what I'm they right. found is photos of this freak. This is Jared's partner, his guy that ran his charity, who looked all American. He looked like a normal dude. Wow. Totally. Yeah. Disgusting. And so Rochelle Herman, the one, you know, who's the main source of the interview, so she is based out of Sarasota, Florida, and she is a radio host. Well, she knew who I was because years and years ago, it was very sad, but there were two child murders back to back. Well, within a year in that small community, Carly Brucia, Jessica Lunsford, one was kidnapped on camera. The other one was buried alive. And I did a lot of exclusive interviews with those two very, very tragic cases. So Rochelle knew who I was and trusted me to talk to her. And then that's how the producers also then got involved and talked to her more in depth. But I spent a lot of time with her and talk about, she, and she says it in the show, she sacrificed basically her own kids to catch him. Yep. You she know, both of her kids, the one is in Taiwan. The other one sadly is, oh, it's very, very sad. It's, it's so sad. We just, we all have to pray collectively as a nation that her daughter can help get through some of the demons that she's faced. See, they I don't know that part. Well, well, so R Rochelle, that's her first name, right? She's a radio DJ in Sarasota. And, and she was a huge fan of Serena because right. Serena is a big star in Tampa. And, and so you had that trust factor for her. But when I first saw this and I was thinking about it, you go, are there any heroes here? And she was a hero, if you ask me, because she took this on herself because she got a hunch talking to him that he was weird and, and creepy and sick and there might be something going on. So she instigated these conversations with him and recorded them thinking she could take him to the FBI. Right. Yes. And you know, honestly, when you just said that all the hairs on my body just like raised up because what happened was she was covering something for the heart walking association. So she was in a gym and she said that Jared leaned over to her and said, aren't the, some of the middle schoolers hot face. And she was, what what are you talking about but what she did that really could get her into a lot of trouble because florida is a third party state you cannot record without someone's permission mm -hmm. so she started recording some of these phone calls and then she went to the fbi and then they got you know um they got the wiretaps and all of that stuff but she did take it upon herself uh, one thing i will say though and she asked me this and the producers of the show asked me this and if you watch the show, she talks about a birthday party for her son where she invites mm -hmm. Jared in. And even the investigator said, do you involve your own kids? I mean, I can honestly say that I, just like the investigator, I could not. I mean, not in I have a beautiful like daughter. 
Yes. No. Yeah, no way. Yeah, and I, you know what? It's not like she was I, law enforcement or anything, you know? And she, okay, look, I know she, you know her very, very well. She, there's something off with her, maybe a little. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, I, 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 Rochelle. Okay, I'm talking yeah. about Rochelle. Uh, but, but Cato, she, she used her children as bait, essentially. Not me, but more so verbally with him to tease him, to encourage him, to try to prod things right. out of him. And it worked. This guy fell for it. I mean, this is Jared from Subway. The dope that has the smaller size pants now running around with his big old denim pants and making money all over the country. But he, he, how would, how would you say something like that on the phone? Not thinking it could be recorded. And he was so blunt. He was so direct about what, what he was looking for. Well, because he, I, because he, she got his trust in that. Yeah. So he doesn't know it's being recorded, yeah. but yeah. And then the FBI actually did, didn't use that. If I remember. But no, because he didn't show up for the party. Right. Serena, he, he, he had something came right, up in the schedule. He, yeah, he didn't show up. The, he didn't show up for the party. He canceled at the last minute, and you know, Rochelle. Can you imagine, guys? Like, she is so determined to bring him to justice, mm -hmm. and so I think you get so caught up in something, and and she was so determined to help that probably didn't even realize the ramifications, and had to and had to live with that, right? And then he, yeah, he never shows up for the party. So, so she's, she's telling me that, oh my gosh, he's not showing up. How much more can she take? How much more does she have to do to rein him in? And thank goodness he was arrested yeah. eventually and tried. Yeah. So, so Kato, he didn't show up. So they could have got him for crossing state lines for minor sex, underage right. sex. That's what the sting was. They were going to get him, right? He was going down, Yeah. but he didn't show his schedule changed. And so this whole party was you know, for nothing. And then the FBI was less interested in it and she kind of carried it mm -hmm. on herself. Right. But when you mentioned the fact that we have to collectively pray for her daughter, did he, did she engage like some sort of meeting between his daughter and him? No, like, she never did that. She never did that. But the kids, you know, her one child moved to, um, to, to Taiwan, um, was it Taiwan? Yeah. Taiwan, Thailand. Um, and Angela, the, her daughter is just, just seeing all that as a child it suffered a lot, you know, um, Rochelle has gone on record that says she has PTSD. She had suicidal thoughts. I mean, her, her daughter was traumatized. It broke, her son moved away. It, um, it, it broke her family. It completely broke her family. So her kids were not directly, affected by jared right not directly I, well i and i can't even say that of course they were directly affected but i'm just saying there's just one picture of he met the kids and you know all of that stuff but the the emotional ramifications uh, of what their mom got in and, and jared's uh, wife i saw her in an interview too and she seems very credible uh she has a lawsuit with someone mm -hmm. i don't know if that's still an ongoing lawsuit but she seemed credible because he had a double life mm -hmm. obviously hid it from her and uh, immediately she divorced, filed for divorce mm -hmm. as soon as the FBI raid and found out what, it, what the raid was about. But uh, uh, did you ever meet her? The the uh... I did not. I I didn't meet her. I mean, I if I lived in that state or if if I was the plan was if the because the producers are out of uh, London, Double Act Productions, and with COVID and restrictions of flying, if they were not able to come, then there was the potential that I would have traveled over there, oh. but I did write to Jared. I did write to Jared in prison and he wrote me back. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, back? yeah. What did, did he say what anything? Did you, did you try to set you him say? up or anything? Tuna or Turkey? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I just said, you know, um, people have been watching your case and we'd like to, to talk to you. And he wrote back and actually, I gosh, I should have had the letter with me. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it and send it to you. But he was actually very polite in the letter. And he said, um, maybe at one point he would speak, but right now he's trying to appeal because they're always trying to appeal. Here's cases. A, here's what's really interesting. Everybody. The whole thing's interesting, but the thing is um, he lost 245 pounds, mm -hmm. became an instant hero. I mean, the subway said, the, you know, he t testified that he ate just turkey and then at night he ate a vegetable sandwich on the bread. And then he lost all the weight because based on that diet. So it's a 15 year sentence and he did over 300 commercials. I don't know what year it's on, but it's, it has to be, what is it? it probably least, six, six yeah, years, probably six since he's been so convicted mm -hmm. of what, who's going to get the first interview and is he going to do an interview and will he, 
will that 15 years will be shorter than 15? You think it's going to go a total of 15? And what his life is going to be like, which I don't really care how his life, I hope it's negative, but what his life will be like when he gets out and anybody, and he had kids, right? Yeah. Sure and what did. they're going through. Serena, as a woman, do you, th- don't you think you'd see some signs if your husband was that freaky and sick and perverted and just, you know, evil? You know, and she, as you said, Kato, she seems very credible and sweet. She was so shaken up, but I would think so. As a woman, I would think you would, you have to have been able to see some signs or some odd behavior. I I mean, I would think, I mean, I would think, and then say she did and she didn't realize what it was, but now she has to live with that too. Yeah. You know, again, my my heart goes out to her too, because of course. And a lot of money was coming in too. Yeah. uh, It'd be easy to look the other way probably because, and then his whole image was this wholesome guy. Right, that this huge yeah. company just trotted out there, and, and it was about healthy living and fitness, and but yeah, my thought is she would have seen something, but yeah, she had to be totally disgusted by that. Um, the other thing too is the partner, the yeah, guy that yeah, you know, gonna, what, what, yeah, exactly. So his partner. so they were investigating him, and Serena, you can fill in the blanks on this one. They were the feds were investigating this guy because they got they they knew there was pictures and and they knew what was going on. But how did Jared keep all that evidence in his house? when his partner was being investigated, because they found a treasure trove, like 500 mm-hmm. photos and then a flash drive, you know, mm-hmm. all based on what they nabbed his partner for. So you'd think he would have cleaned all that crap out of his house, but he never did. But you know what, honestly, what is that saying? I can't remember right now. I mean, criminals are not the smartest knives in the drawer. You know, like the mm-hmm. stupidity, but was it stupidity? Was it stupidity or did he really truly believe that he was above the law because of all the celebrityism? behind him. His celebrity isn't even a word, but all the celebrity behind him, did he even think that he would um, get caught or people would even think to even turn, think about that? And him. he's probably friends with every cop in Indiana, but this was, he was friends with the FBI. He probably was and did many of their charities. Sure. Who knows? He, he's always doing charities. And uh, I think he has had that, that squeaky clean image, yeah. like uh, maybe he is above. The you line. know what my theory is? And you two can relate to this because you've been in the public eye in a very big way for a long time. So you know that everything you do can be judged. People could be watching you. You know, you know, you're not going to, you know, you're just used to it. He was so anonymous. And then he was thrust into such fame that I think he believed the hype. I think he believed was he was untouchable, that he was so, po- I think he confused his popularity for being maybe innocent, maybe a little OJ in him where he convinced himself that he wasn't doing anything wrong. You know, maybe he was that narcissistic or a sociopath. I think he's a sociopath. I think I'm in a, I'm going to, I am going to give the judgment on him right now that he is an official sociopath and I'm not well, a doctor. Well, you know, it's funny because the world that what's happening now in media, how they're trying to make, I'm on Twitter a lot, how they tried to downplay pedophiles by giving them a new word that it's not pedophiles. They, I, I forget the word they're using, but they're trying to normalize certain things. And are they going to try to normalize this dude? Because it's bad what's going on of how everything is changing every day in the schools. And and what is a, if you have a drag show, genders, or if you have, you know, a, teaching eight-year-olds how to give uh, fellatio. And they're in, in books. This is in the fathers were reading these on camera. I want my kids out of the school. So it's sort of like there's this change. They're trying to have a change that you can kind of see it's like, this is pathetic. It is so sickening that they're trying to normalize the most, I, I think one of the grossest crimes ever in, in being a pedophile. Absolutely. I mean, when I listened to those tapes, I physically threw up because the only thing I could think about was my daughter. I mean, it's just, it's, how could you be attracted to a child? I just, I, I, you know, as an adult, how could you be attracted to the, 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 the people we want to protect the most, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and, and you wonder if it's because when he was heavy, was he picked on a lot when he was 300 some pounds or did something happen in his mind at that period of his life? I don't know. And maybe there were psychological things that just stayed in his brain forever, but yeah, it's, you know, this is a, yeah. psych- a psychologist has to answer. These Go things. back and watch this, Cato, because when you hear his voice on tape, it's chilling, oh. like Serena said. And here's why. Because he plays this like goofy, fun loving, yeah. easygoing. I'm from Indiana, dopey little, you know, boy next door <laughs> thing. 
And then he is so intense when he describes what he's looking for. When he's talking to your friend, Rochelle, I mean, oh, okay. age, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very unsettling to say the least. And again, mm-hmm. my perception of him was, Oh, wow. He got, you know, cause I I'm in the middle of something right now. What I know what can happen when the feds are coming down on you. If they're at, if you're in their crosshairs, you're done. You got no chance for the most part. Yeah. It's a big story that I'm working on right now is all about that. So I thought maybe there was some element of that. Maybe uh, the ball was rolling downhill and he couldn't stop it. But then when you hear the details, ugh, it, 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 it really yeah. rocks your world. It really does because we're normal people, right? So we don't look for this type of, so we don't know the details. And then when you hear the actual details of what these people do and what they're looking for, it's unfathomable, especially if you have kids. Yeah. And, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think what you were saying is, um, when his when his partner or the the gentleman that runs his charity and all that when he when he's being investigated by the feds, how does a person how dumb is it because you're above the law? How does he not burn everything? And it's it's amazing, right? It's like why uh-huh. he who who knows he had to be thinking, oh, I, I must be next. This guy's going to roll over on me. Well, not the right word to use roll over on me, but but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. for sure. You would think you'd be a little suspicious or worried, scared, right? Yeah, hey, yeah. like and. It goes again to like, did he have that massive of an ego? You know, that again, that he's I think he did. untouchable. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Yeah, I think he did have that big of an ego. I really do. Yeah. And what about guys? What about this? That marketing in general changed completely after that because here's Subway, a big company that puts all of their, all of their eggs in one basket and with, with Jared Fogel. Can you imagine? Since then, have you seen that any major company just relies on one spokesperson? They don't. They if you can't. really look at it, they can't. No, that's true. Except maybe one of those insurance companies or something. But I mean, they, they have to be so careful now, right? Or, or at least the women aren't weird like the guys you can trust, you know, hey, well, from today or whoever. The, the... Yeah. Yes and no. And I think I think if you look back, and I'm not going to mention names, but you look at certain commercials, you'll see certain commercials. They have guys that have had felonies that are still in or the commercial spokesperson. And I, anyways. Um, you sure you don't want to name a name? Can well, you give I'll us a clue? Say, I, well, I think it's a, sort of in the rap world. Oh, okay. And that have been, have been convicted and there are uh, doing national spots. I guess it depends I, on the brand, right? In your audience, maybe your some certain audiences. Yeah, I may, maybe, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, I also think it's all because of social media of how uh, they're, the plan is, to normalize the repetitive, repetitive. I guess it's okay then if it is okay. Is this okay that you're wearing this dress, Tom, or whatever? It's just, it, it blows me away. There's nothing that's, it's something's got to happen where people have finally drawn the line and you say, no, no more. This is my kids. You're not going to do anything. Or no, I don't believe in what you're saying. And no, you're woke. I don't care. Cancel me. It's just everything right. is about that. And it's right. changing. It's changing. Well, it's changing America, changing the world. But it's uh, becoming a, a, I'm sorry, it my political town. Yeah, but that's not yeah. even really political. It, I mean, that's it, just like that. We, like, we get, I, anybody with common sense sees right. the world's changing that way. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we don't, I, I hope America is not becoming this weak country, anyways. That's how I describe Holy, it, too, Serena. You got me just, wound up, but just weak. I know. I'm weak sorry. I know. But I, I'm really passionate about that, about social media and all of that, too. I mean, it's changed everything. It has. It's changed. Serena everything. has a daughter, a sophomore, you know? So you, you have to be very cognizant of what, but you have such a close relationship. I'm sure you know everything that's going on in her life, but it's it's tough raising kids right now. If you're not it strong is. as a parent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's, you know, it's one of those questions too, like, okay, how much do you, you want to you give them some freedom too and trust them, but that's a whole other show, guys. It's a whole other show. Sure, it yeah. is. Well, let's talk about this show. Um, what's it like? What Do the groupies, do the fans come out when they see you on these shows? Joe Exotic, this one. <laughs> Tell me about the fan mail. I know you're getting it. Come on. He's got fans yeah, all over the world now. Oh no, no, you're you're too. He's too kind to me, isn't he? Well, no. yeah, I see why. <laughs> you, you you got the A game. You got A game. I just want to hear the details. <laughs> hey, Serena, what was the filming like? What was the filming like when you're doing this? Um, was it a long? Was it did oh. multiple days? Describe it. So long. Okay, so this is interesting. So, but prior to even doing the show, they did a sizzle reel, you know, and the sizzle reel is what like three minutes long. Um, but that took days of filming days and days. So I went, talked to Rochelle. I was there for, I don't know, 12 hours at least, um, 
12 hours. We did, you know, some scenes with her and then they presented the reel to focus groups and, you know, not just about Jared, but some other cases that I'm not familiar with. And the focus group said, that's, that's the case that they wanted to know about, but it takes a very long time to, and you guys both know this, right. To film any type of documentary, you know, two minutes, two minutes on air is probably at least 12 to 20 hours, Sure, you know, in the field. The research, the getting the B-roll, and a lot of that stuff was re recreated, you know, in a very well done way. They did a great job. The production was awesome on this. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then you, you guys really did, do you guys, and Tom, you, so you both, in, in, when I, I use the word, I'm all flustered now talking about it because I know it's it's bothersome, right? Like bringing back the memories of everything. But I, I do think that they did a very good job putting that documentary together, the double act. Yeah, I agree. And the fact that it was three episodes, they could let it breathe a little bit. You know, you're not rushing through it. And then you got to do this. You got to just like let this kind of play out because it's over multiple years. You got to do the whole story. And then you got to really like just let this develop as far you can see these guys. They're predators. That's what they do. And then when they laid it out like that and you're hearing the recordings and they're patient and they've got a plan, you know, mm -hmm. they're so dangerous. They really yeah. are. And the fact that we're downplaying it as a society when we should be making amping it up more and watching for these people and just lock them up. Yeah. And and by the way, no, one, I don't know if it's in the documentary and this history before he became the subway uh, spokesperson. Did he have affairs with kids back then, even before, right. that, you know, is there a bunch of people that might be coming out still going? Yeah, I remember that, dude. But he, they don't recognize him now because he's 245 pounds lighter. Yeah. So I'm going to change it up a little bit here and ask you. Yes. So do you, it's the, you know, weekends are coming up. Are you, I imagine you're inundated with people who want to be married by you. Oh, so sweet. Well, I, so my show Love in America is my absolute, like, I did such hard news for so long. So I love my show Love in America and Dating in America. So I think personally, I have set up more than nine couples because now in the day of social media, you can see, you know, like, oh, I remember I said that you guys, have, but I was doing this back in college. Mm -hmm. So my friend, Joe Papadopoulos, who's getting married on April 23rd. And I have to say that's such an important day because my daughter's birthday is on the 23rd. So every time, anytime the number 23, and it's, not, of course, I know it's Michael Jordan's number two, but it's also Sammy's birthday. So 23. And so every time it comes up, every, we always stop on the air and say, oh, it's Sammy's birthday. So my friend Joe Papadopoulos is getting married on April 23rd. Her, birth her birthday is May 23rd, but my birthday is in April. And that's going to be the big lunch that I, yes, can wow. marry people. Papa, yeah. Do I know him, Papadopoulos? Was he a photographer? Who is he? Papadopoulos? You're, you're do I know him? No, you're thinking of National Lampoon <laughs> Christmas Vacation. <laughs> or no, you know that name, Joe Vegas. Papadopoulos? Have I not, Joe? That was his name. Is he an old friend of yours? Do you know that, right? In Vegas Vacation. He's an old friend of mine. No, he chases no, 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 Papa Giorgio. Oh, you yeah, got Papa me. Giorgio. Papa Giorgio. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I love that movie. I know it was a Papa. Yeah, Papa Giorgio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Papa Giorgio. Remember when he had that fake ID made on the strip yeah. with him, that big metal case? And he yeah, just yeah, put yeah. His head Okay, you Papa, yeah. Papa, Papa Giorgio. Giorgio. Well, I'm putting it. I used to work with him at in Tampa, and now he's a teacher, and he's marrying a wonderful um, woman named Molly. She's an attorney. But I'm going to put a shout out on your show, guys, that yes. I, once I marry Jeff Papadopoulos, if people want me to marry them, I would be a yeah, the damn. And every, She's available. And every wedding needs a witness. So, <laughs> hey, hi, Joe, it's me, Kato. I'm the witness to your wedding. <laughs> you know, Serena, on a serious note, do you do you know, do you have a feeling what works for people? I mean, this is, hey, why don't you go meet him and go out for drinks and see what happens? Can you actually tell and then you take pride in connecting the dots and making sure it happens? I honestly, honestly, from the bottom of my heart do. I really do because I genuinely love people. I love people and my I'm meeting people constantly through my show, through my job, through my daughter. So when I see people and I meet them and I know someone's single, I do match them and I match them through compatibility, friendship. And I know you have to be physically attracted, of course, as well, you know? Um, and I have several couples now that even, oh, here's a great story on my show, Dating in America. I had a guy on, his name is M Mike Evers. He was on my show, showed a link to this girl he wanted to date and now they're engaged. Get out of town, get so, out of town. Show, and I don't okay. even count that as one of the nine. So that's, that's Dating in America <laughs> and then Love in America, right? 
So mm-hmm. is Dating America first and then it becomes Love in America? Are these two totally, no. what's the difference between those two shows? So Love in America, you have to be married to be on Love okay. in America. That's what you have to be married. And that's a, you know, and dating in America can be anybody. But since Dating in America launched, I'm very excited. I'm very excited about it that this guy met the woman he's gonna marry. Then I have a, several people who have watched the show and now some of them are dating. And so we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. Is that in the rider of the contract when you go on your show that you have to get married? <laughs> yeah, I just met this girl, but we're on the show. You will get married. And how do, how, do, how do you get to watch the show? Where do we find it? Yeah. So you can download RHS TV. It's a free app and, um, you know, the big TV or on the phone and it's everywhere. It's on Roku, Apple, Amazon, um, the Serena Fazan network. You know, I'm on, if you Google my name, I'm on every social media platform that you can imagine speaking of social media, but yeah. Kato, so she's right. got a brand she's sitting on here. I think that could explode the, you know, just the love guru because it's, it's real for you. You know, you, yeah. you, you know, it's not fake and, and someone needs to take that role. I, I think, I think this thing can take off me and Kato are going to talk about some things and see what we can do too. We got to get you out of here every once in a while for real. We got to come out to LA, you know, make the rounds, right? Kato. Yeah. You've totally LA. I love to come out to LA. Yeah. I would love to. Em- the good luck. That's a. Uh, um, that's from your heritage, the emerald. Correct? Isn't that a? a it mean not around your neck. Isn't that? A- oh yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So and you know green is um so green. I have green eyes and the whole business is green because they found out. This is so embarrassing for me to talk about, but it's two percent. I guess people in the world have green eyes, so <laughs> that's why they launched the green. And you know emerald is. Sammy's birth month. So I love green. And yes, yeah, so I was actually, I got this in South Africa. This, are you talking about the hand, the prayer uh, hand? Yeah, that's what, uh, yes, the uh, green, whatever. The hand no, of no. Fatima, the hand of Fatima. Yes, Dr. Okay. Michael Friedman, um, who's a dear friend of mine, picked this out. Hmm. Very cool. Plus, you, what's the green stone? The green that's stone, cool was, too. I, yes. Yeah. Isn't this beautiful too? Yeah. I don't know exactly what the stone is, but I wear this. I wear this all the time. Okay, all the time. No, no with green eyes, it looks like work from my significant other. So I have green eyes too. So we'll talk later. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what, do you? You know, do you really have green eyes? <gasps> oh my god! This is, so oh, hey, hey, this is serendipitous that I am on the show, and you know that's my favorite word. Serendipitous, happy accident. It's a oh good my, God. Word to my, use. my favorite word is Papa Giorgio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about you two in front of a green screen? It's like you got these vacant <laughs> eyes, man. <Ugh. laughs> um, what kind of what kind of preparation? What kind of what went into the ordaining process for you now to be able to officially marry these people that you're hooking up? It was is an oh, okay. online class, or what'd you do? Yes, it was an online class, but I'm also going to become a notary just in case, because can you guys imagine? So I researched the laws in the state of Florida on who, you know, what you need to do to uh, to marry somebody. But I was thinking, so I take these online classes and I've been ordained by two separate organizations. But then I think, oh my gosh, what if it comes out that, you know, like, you know, the Celebration of Life Church or whatever, they it, it, it doesn't hold. So I'm also going to become an official notary because i think you're safe that way for sure to mar- to make sure right. that i notarize you know, it. want to make yeah. sure it's official for these people yeah. <laughs> you like, damn it what happened oh yeah uh, i had a big gap those 10 years no you've never been married <laughs> hey do you have a go-to line when you know you're doing the ceremony i now pronounce you serendipitously together <laughs> you know what oh my gosh tom i'm so glad you brought this up i don't have a go-to line yet you guys should help me create one and we do need to use the word serendipity well if it's in florida i would say i now pronounce you person of interest and wife <laughs> <laughs> right well there's, you know, there's so much the- crime there <laughs> crazy in the crime. Room, yeah. We would always say when something, wherever it happened, wherever it happened, some crazy crime, we'd say, okay, what's the Florida connection? It's true. Like what's in the water? Yeah. 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 I mean, Florida is where they started the whole thing of people eating people's faces. Right? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the basis of that bath salt? It's all started in Florida. I remember. The, am I right? Yes. And there, okay. And I think, and I actually just weighed in on a case about the guy. It's something with, I've done so many cases now, but yes, the eating of the face, um, Mm-hmm. A few of those. Actually. You know, they're on a radio station out here called KABC. Um, 
Jillian Barber used to be on the, yeah, on the, my, okay, she used to be friend. on, right. So she was on the radio show uh, and they did this thing, this segment every single day called Florida or not Florida. And then they'd read this crazy story and then the caller would come in and say, yeah, that's Florida or it's not. And then they win big prizes, but Florida or not Florida, oh, because great. you can, all those scenarios make sense potentially in Florida, right? It's just for some reason, it's not like we don't have weirdos here, Serena, and, and bad things and, and crazy stuff here in L.A. But anyway, yeah, what it, is it about? things just happen. At least you guys have a better governor who will give you that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, we okay. have this. Uh, yes, much better governor. There. OK, OK, so we'll, we'll let you go here. Thanks for spending a lot. Are we missing anything from the Jared thing or behind the scenes? Anything else you want to share? You did such a great job. Anything else? I really thank you guys. No, I really, really appreciate that. I don't think so. I mean, but if, if any questions come up, you know, okay, please. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting that he wrote you back. I'd love to see what you wrote, what he wrote back. I think that's really interesting. Oh. You can maybe post that, but um, are you, um, the producers guess, were really interested in that. See, they yeah, were surprised. Where, yeah. By the way, where is he in prison right now? In what state? Some in federal Indiana? prison. I'm not sure. In Colorado. Because what what I'm thinking is if he's in a uh, any kind of prison involves kids. If it's white collar, he might be okay. But if it's not, he's there, he must because with kids they will. I mean, I I gotta imagine he's getting just beat sure. up and thrashed a lot, would, or that he's isolated. But there's no way he's in a minimum security prison. You want to think so? No, no I, country I, I, club prison. I don't think so. I mean, some of those federal prisons are pretty tough. They that he had to be there, but they probably do. You know, a high profile guy like that, they isolate him a little bit and keep him separate, but. I'm not they sure. They do. They have. They have to. They put them in uh, protective custody. Look what happened to Jeffrey Dahmer. You no, know. No. Remember? I mean, in the shower, he was attacked, and the shower and killed. Yeah. I mean, they're even. Even the criminals. Another doc. Another document. Even the criminals cannot cannot even handle the pedophiles. You yeah. know. Uh, and uh, also, um, his name uh, uh, got hung in prison. I'm sorry. What's uh, everything's? You know. Oh yeah. Oh, Jeffrey Island. Epstein. Yeah, Jeffrey yeah. Epstein. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. You know. No, Cato's from Milwaukee. The D, the D, my sister went to Marquette. And I think, I think on campus at Marquette, we one went. of the dorm rooms is where it used to be this housing thing that Jeffrey Dahmer used to live in. Yeah. No, but I, the, it, the details of how Jeffrey Dahmer actually met his maker are pretty unpleasant. Yeah. And I'll treat you. I, <laughs> Some I would, in, in jail justice there for sure. I was in California, but yeah, very, I knew exactly the area where he was at. They tore it down. But mm -hmm. anyway, that's another doc you should work on. Yep. All right. Yeah. So here's our assignments. We're going to come yes, up with a okay. go-to line for you for when you now pronounce people better. Me and Kate are going to have a hand in that. Yeah. We're going to we're a gonna... hand in that. There it is. <laughs> we just thought of it. And then Love that. a hand in that. A hand in that. Yes, right? the wedding hand. Yes. Put your please put your ring on vibrate. Something you know, make it fun. Picture of us right now too. Right here, a second. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, thanks. Do we have anything else? I think it was great. Okay. The next documentary on you're coming back on this show. Okay. Just I'm telling uh, you right now. And uh, we're going to remind everybody, right? That the two of you are going to come. Yes. On my show. We on would love record. to. On we would record. love to. On you just record. tell us when, yeah, right? Let us know. You want us together at the same time? Yes. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Done. Okay. Deal. We, we look forward it. to it. And come to LA. We'll see you here. And uh, Tom will take us out. I would love to come to LA. Yeah. And no, you've got to bring Sammy too. We'll, if she wants to come out, we'll show her the good sights. She'd have so much fun. Sammy's a sweetheart. She really is cool. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Her daughter, her daughter, Sammy. Um, okay. Great having you today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and everything. And I'm going to connect you two. So you two can stay in touch as well. Yeah. Thanks so much. And of course, it must have been the best to work with Tom, isn't it? Oh my God. Isn't he amazing? I mean, here I you are say. giving me all these accolades. No, you are so fantastic. And you have such positive, wonderful energy. Yep. And nobody works harder than Tom Center. Thanks, guys. He's got everything going on. Appreciate it. That's why the show's a success, success because of Tom. Because of Cato. I'm just glad to there be in go. his we world. But <laughs> hey, Serena, this was awesome. And we're going to stay in touch because I want to yes. see this brand for you explode because it will. There's no question about it. And we will, we will talk to you again down the road very okay. soon. Okay. And great job break. on the Jared Fogel doc too. Okay. <laughs> great job. Love right. it. Bye guys. Bye bye. Mwah. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank see you. you. Bye. Bye. See, you got to hang out with people with good energy. I know. It's always the best thing in life. Yes, it is. Pay it forward, baby. That's Pay what this show is all about. Okay. So that's it. That's a wrap. Everything else cool in your life? Yeah. Things are all great. Right. Okay. You know, you and I, we can't mention exactly, but we're working on a, a few other things besides our podcast. 
and uh, things have been pretty amazing with some of the emails coming through. I'm sure you saw the, today's and yep, yep. Because you don't, you don't very often hear from a very high level agent someone excited like that and that just makes you kind of like wow yep okay so we're definitely gonna be able to share some details about this coming soon so uh Cato and i've been working on something along with one of his partners for many many years which we hope is coming to fruition i think it's gonna be great do you like this look here it's the, interesting uh, it's different it looks like behind the scenes right we're like in a hidden in, camera in a nut house or something <laughs> <laughs> all right hey download subscribe one degree of scandalous tell your friends about it give us a review on youtube Five stars all the way on yes. Apple and everywhere you listen to this. Some comments. We'd love it. Follow us on social media. The Milwaukee Brewers season is going to be starting pretty soon. Oh, I cannot wait. Brewers. And also, uh, you mentioned, of course, YouTube follow. And, and for humor, I'm at Cato underscore Kalen, K-A-E-L-I-N. Even Stock Tip Dave, our producer, listens and watches my stuff and he comments. Should. And says, gee, Cato, you're funny. <laughs> hey, by the way, the airport stuff that you do on, on Twitter yes. and Instagram, where are you getting that video? Uh, that's my video and I'll be flying in airport, you know, next week, there'll be a new video coming up. So in a, in a week, I'll be, you know, I, real quick, I'm heading to uh, Orlando uh, okay. celebration, Florida. And I do this event. Um, well, I, I wish I had the who's who of there's some great, great people that are going to be there, but I always like the actor, William Fritner, Jim McMahon will be there. Um, uh, Kevin Nealon with the comedy last year, who I, one of the, most underrated stand-ups. Love Kevin Nealon. And, He's uh, so good. It's just a great event. And then we do a 110-mile car chase. Uh, I mean, yeah. a car a car race. And guess what car they gave me? What? They gave me the uh, DB5, the uh, Bond from uh, Casino Royale. Nice. So I'll Have be in fun. that car with Chucky. Have fun. Have a great time. Thanks. By the way, Dave just walked in here either because he heard the word Orlando, because that's where Kato's going, or yeah. he has got a date and he wants us to get the hell out of here. Which one is it? Now we're going to officially say goodbye. Bye, everybody. For Cato Kalen, I'm Tom Zenner. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week.